Shoot it to the right, shoot it to the left Hunger down low and reach high to the sky Got my rhythm down pat, so they say I'm looking like a winner in every way So when I hear somebody say, what a horse I know they're talking about me, of course And I'm gonna be in that winner circle someday Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker A high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker I'm gonna be in that winter circle someday yep. My phone was ringing and we were talking and everything going wild at one time <laughs> But we had one heck of a horse show We did we I mean, we really, really did We had a well of a show Great classes I'm looking forward to it. Yes, sir. All right. Well, go ahead. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And JD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book, too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Subaru and see what being number one is all about. Remember the winner's circle. You got the gift shop, you got knives, you English saddles and accessories, English and cutback, Western and trooper saddles and accessories, complete line attack, bits, spurs, training aids, stable supplies, grooming medication, horse clothing, riding apparel, accessories, and footwear. While you're in town, go down to Winter Circle and tell them what a horse sent you. The Tennessee Walking Horse is a perfect horse to bring a family together for fun-filled days and nights of competition. From the youngest and the smallest in the family to the oldest and the biggest, the Tennessee Walking Horse provides an avenue for the entire family to enjoy competing together. If you ride one today, you will own one tomorrow. Welcome back. You know, we did have one well of a show. We did. And we really did. We're going to be showing a bunch of victory passes. But first, two announcements. I still have a little bit of jewelry. A lot of it's gone, but I'm giving great prices on what's left. I had a lady go back to North Carolina with some of it this weekend. And uh, deal. got a couple other people that's wanting them. Them blue ones are gone. <laughs> they, uh, it's uh, still got some real pretty items. And if I keep looking at them studs and, and I keep thinking about it, if I end up buying them things, you need to shoot me. <laughs> but it's uh, it's getting there, and everybody is getting ready for Christmas. Give me a holler. I can make, I can help you make somebody happy, happy, happy. Real happy. Real happy. <laughs> say, say they'll get real happy. <laughs> real happy. <laughs> real, really happy. All right, we're going to Tunica, Mississippi. Judges Jamie Hankins, Newton Parks, and Aaron Self will mark the cards. That's the 10th, 11th, and 12th. Uh, you can call D. Cantrell, 706-366-1011, Tom Mink, 615-426-6199, or Sarah Smith, 931-580-5085. Margo, you read, 972-772-1390. If that's not United, you tell me what is. You're right. I'm going to tell you what I'm looking forward to, though. Did you get you any tickets for the drawing? No, but I'm going to get me some. I, I, I've been reading them th that list <laughs> of stuff, and I'll tell you. It's unbelievable, and they keep adding to it. Yes. 
it's not getting smaller, it's getting larger. Yes. And uh, I bought some from Susan Coleman the other night. She told me that she was coming back to get them, and she called me. She said, Jerry, if you got them ready, can you bring them to me? Because they was down there on the floor selling tickets right and left. It's uh, But that, that, that's it. the list of stuff is unreal. It is. I think, I don't know about you, but if I was to win that, I think I'd donate the majority of it back to them for the yeah. silent auction at the at trainer the banquet. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's uh, something else. Horses, Jerry. This winter, what, what do you think everybody's going to be doing? I think everybody's going to be riding, getting the coach ready for the next year. You know, your two-year-old horses coming up two year olds and stuff like that. And, <laughs> Getting, some, you know, trying to make a difference in between the ones that showed this year and the next year, you know. I'd like to see us have a, a uh, fundraiser, which the fundraising, a lot of people, you can say what you want to, but fundraising is, is exactly what it is. It's, and I know yeah. that we've had some that fell flat on its face. One, we was, uh, Everybody's really enthused about, but uh, the person we was dealing with on it wasn't exactly what he claimed to be, and a lot of people put money into that. But now, I'm telling you, when, when you got someone that, well, like Frank Eichler, doing a lot of work. Yes. Jeffrey Hire's doing a lot of work. Steve Smith's doing a lot of work. And these ladies out here, Sarah Smith, Susan Coleman, Carrie Tisma, Heather Beard, Allison Bicknell, all of these women, they're working for one cause. So I'm going to say this, and I'm going to make some people mad, but I really don't care. If you're in this industry, you need to jump on board and help. Yes. If you don't help, then as far as I'm concerned, you need to take your horse and go home. Yeah. Because this is important for all of us, not just the ones that win a lot, but the ones that win a little. I win very little. I had a horse the other night. I thought he looked pretty good. Yes. And, and he didn't win. But I'm going to help. And I, I think anybody that's in this industry that wants to keep showing needs to help. Oh, yeah, especially if it's your livelihood, you know. And that's yes. my livelihood. Is, is train these horses and stuff like that. Without these horses, I wouldn't know what else I can do, you know, because, I mean, I've been doing it all my life. Well, that's, that's and, true and with so a lot I'm, of them. That's what I'm saying. And so, I mean, especially the trainers and, and the people that works there at the barns and stuff like that, I mean, hmm. you got to pitch in and try to put, put in your part, you know. You better believe it. Well, right. the guy that won the, the uh, grooms class. That's right. They told me, Greg Bryant told me, that he'd been doing that ever since he was a kid. That's right. All his life, he's been doing mm -hmm. exactly what he's doing. So it's not just the trainers, it's the grooms. Mm -hmm. That's right. A lot of people that they get out here and they, they bust their back in, getting horses ready and, and helping as much as they can. So the people that can, I just think that it's, I believe it's everybody's responsibility if you're going to be in this industry. You're right. That you help. And, and you help a lot. I know that some people are given money and given a whole lot of their time. And when I say a whole lot of time, I mean a whole lot of time. Yeah. People was talking about a, a deal already being made and, and uh, Frank Eichler let me know, said, Jerry, there ain't no deal being made. Once before, if, if when they was up there talking about the Humane Society was offering a deal, everybody said they was trying to be forced into making a deal. If they had listened to what was being said, they'd have realized that they said the only way this could ever be done is with 100% participation. Yes. And they already knew they didn't have 100% because I was against it. Mm -hmm. and, and some of them standing in there were against it, so it was never going to be. But if they hadn't presented it and later on found out that it had been offered, then everybody would be saying, well, they're trying to hide stuff. Yes. And now, later on today, people are going to find out that everything's being laid on the table on this. Jeffrey Howard does a fantastic job of laying everything out, what's happening, what has happened, and where we're headed. 
And it's important that people watch it and listen to it and pay attention. When it was up there, it wasn't no time till I got a, a message back from Sudi Reed talking about how informative it is. And it is. Yes. Uh, if, if you listen to it yet? Yes, I listened to it. Well, I was at some of the meetings that he done. I mean, he done a well, a good job on presenting well, himself. It, it, it's, it's out there and, and it's exactly where we're at. So I just wish that people would, would you know, kind of look, listen, and then say, hey, right now we're our back's against the wall. Yes. And we're kind of like that, that old dog that runs around. You can kick him, kick him, kick him until he gets on his front porch. Well, I can tell all y'all one thing. I'm ready to bite somebody. <laughs> and uh, it, it just, I see what's going on. I watch them the other night. What they do? They got a horse for uh, substance abuse. Substance abuse because he had the shoe polish or the paint, whichever they used, on the horse's hoof. Yep. What kind of sense does that make? I mean, in all honesty, what kind of sense does that make? That we've been doing that for years and years, and it's been all right. But tonight, they decide, well, it's not all right. You're, you're right. And, you're, and that's my major problem. I, I have no problem with them making you follow the HPA. Well, the, the biggest thing of it is, is like this. You have... One time they will turn a horse down on a scar rule. And then three or four weeks later, that same horse can show and they won't ever say nothing about it. You know, once a scar is a scar. It, it doesn't go away. It don't go away. So, I mean, you got to have some kind of facts or whatever, you know, that they got to stick with all the time on it. But they, but they change from one, from one time to the next. Every time you go, it's always something different. Well, I've got scars. And they've always been there. They're not going nowhere, and I yes. can rub them all I want to. They're not going to go away. They're going to be there. And if that horse is scarred, well, like sci-fi, he got in that wire and yes. cut his foot. That ain't going away. That ain't going away. That's Never right. going away. And we can't show him because of the warts left scars. Mm -hmm. So we can't show him because of that, but they're not going to go away. They're going to be there. They're going to be there. And and I know that. That's why he does not go in the show ring. Yes. But at least be, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a strickler on rules and following the rules and and being honest about what I'm doing. If, if I'm out there and I'm looking, if I come in, every time I come to the barn, I looked at my horse, and if I come in there for one reason only, and that was to find something wrong that I could complain, moan, and groan about, then it wouldn't be long before you'd kick me out. Yeah. But I don't do that. And if I come in there, and if I say something, I ask a question, and you know that. So what I'm saying to people is the USDA comes and does their job the way it is described and not invent things like before when we got that three sales even though you can't see it, there's three cell thick scar here. I mean, I know what that is. You know what that is. And the veterinarian that was saying it knew what it was too. Yeah. But he said it anyway because he thought he was so much smarter. These are things that really, really upset me because in all honesty, we got the greatest horse in the world. Oh yes, we do. And we don't need people coming in and inventing problems. If there's a problem, let's address it. But uh, we, we don't get any help as far as addressing it. We can point it out. We can get veterinarians to say, okay, that's why. What's the first thing I do before we take any horse to the show? You get a, a licensed veterinarian to come out there and check, his, and check and, your horse. And I'll always do it. Yeah. Now, if he goes up there and they say, well, he moved, I ain't, and I see him move, there ain't much I can do about that's that. Right. Horse is going to be a horse. So well, he moved. The biggest thing of it is like this. I mean, when you're taking a horse through inspection or whatever, every time you take a horse through inspection through show, they check every horse that comes through that ring. That's right. Don't care who it is. But now the government, to me, they pick and choose who they want to pick, who they want to check or whatever. Yes. And I mean, and that's what it feel like is unfair is because only if you if you sit back and watch, 
Oh, I have. There's, there's certain people going to get checked pretty much every time they come through there. I'm not going to name them. Yeah, but I'm not, not going to name them. The That's show. what I'm saying. But I, mean, I don't have to. Yeah. They know who. But I, I mean, mean but they, just, they know who they're targeting. But I mean, but certain people get checked every time, regardless on how many horses or what horse they take. I mean, if they bring six, seven horses up there, but yeah. four or five out of six, they're going to get gonna you. They're going to check. They're going to check. They'll even run them down. They'll run them so, down or whatever. Down. You know, so I mean, and that's and that's the biggest thing that's that makes you upset is because it feel like that they got a target on you. That's it. And then, I mean, it ain't. It, it's not right. It, it, and I'm gonna say the same thing about judging. Judges need to judge the horse the way that horse is tonight, not the way he was yesterday in the pasture, not the way he was last week at another show or the week before or the month before, but like he is that night, I, yeah. no matter who's on his back, that along with good, solid, honest inspections could make this industry great. You but are. until everybody gets on in that boat and says, well, that's the way it is. I, I've seen a horse the other night that I have always liked. He's a great horse. Big up front, big up front. The other night, though, he did not have no back stride at all and won anyway. That's not right. No. And, and I don't mean to make anybody mad, but we have to look, judge horses the way they are, and let our inspections be honest inspections, straightforward. But I think we're going to go first and... Uh, I believe we're about ready. No, we got to go. We got to take another commercial. Then we got to go. No, we don't either. We got fall classic videos that we got to watch. Here's some good ones. There's Harlan Doc. Now go ahead. You said what you're gonna do, Giddy. <laughs> I would tell you what. Daddy is a good rider, but now she learned from her dad, Kenny. Now he's a good guy. Yeah. And she's married to and Shannon she, and Hart. And she's married to Shannon Hart. And Shannon's a good guy, too. So she got a, a group, group of good people that's surrounding her. And Renee's her mother. Yes. And Dahlia Smith Hart is a veterinarian. Yep. I ain't figured out what Shannon is yet. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon's a good guy. Jose's solid pusher. And hey, I'm going to tell you something. This one right here, Wayne told me that they're going to offer this mare for sale. Yes. I'm telling you, people, look at it. She's a good look, one. Look there and tell me. You want something for a Christmas present? Call Jimmy McCollum. That's right. He will fix you up right away. That's a nice yeah. mare right there. Hey, she's beautiful. Yeah. Right here is Zorro Jr. I thought Zorro Jr. made a fantastic yes. show. Now, he really did. He uh, that was a good, solid, solid class, and, and he did great. I'm gonna tell you, they had some really top horses at that show. They right did. There. Very I mean, they pleased. were. You, it'd been, I'd been hard fetched to find any that weren't great. But now that one right there, super good. Right here. <laughs> oh, that one speaks for himself, right there. Hey, he just. He, he, I'm going to tell you what, I believe he'll show again in Tunica, but he'll show in the open. Yeah. Now, so Robert swaps around. Mm-hmm. Now, Georgia, Florida line, he's good. Been good for a long time. Get it done. Get it done. Right here, Top Gun Maverick. Two-year-old stallion. Bob Hancock just keeps going out and he buying some good horses. horses. He does have some good horses, some good real horses. good horses. Good horses. Yeah. Hard to beat that right there, Jerry. Yeah. I tell you what, that's something else. Maverick, the ones that are out there. Oh, good. If, and I right hear is I'm Big Enough and Maxine Beasley. That little old girl can flat ride. Yeah. They enjoy it too. Oh Lord, they have a ball. Yeah. 
They do have a good time, and Beth's right there with them. She, she enjoys it too. Praise and honor, Jeff Lachlan for Doris Pennick. They said Vicky was feeling a lot better. Okay. I saw Mr. Pennick and Doris while we was at the show. We talked for a little while. They, they gave her, a, the, the barn did, gave her, Doris, a little award. Good deal. Praise and honor. It's a good family. I'm glad Vicky's yeah. doing better. Right here, oh, Mr. Nice Paul Hill right and Paul Simmons. I'm going to tell you what, Paul made one heck of a show. Yes. No doubt about it. That horse had it all together. You know, he's just That's like, he's like a lot of these people who love this horse. He just oh. takes everything in stride. Oh, he <laughs> loves them horses now. He likes it. Super nice guy to talk yes. to, too. The Char Queen and John Allen Calloway for Beth Beasley. Tell you what, this was a good class. Yep. Every time you see these two yos, especially when Phillies come in, they get better and better every time they show. Hey, they do. Now they're getting good. They are. John Allen work hard too. Yeah, ball. he does. I'm gonna tell you. I have, to, I have to say it. I'd have tagged this one right here because yeah. I thought she was outstanding. Title defense and Samantha Green. A lot of people are hollering for that young lady because yeah. I mean she put on a good show, real That's good a, show. Never a real nice. Horse. Never missed a beat. Samantha, she really loved that horse right there. Man. But she can flat ride him. Yeah. And she does, she owns a pretty nice bunch of good ones too. Oh, yeah. Here's a kingpin. Now, he was reserved, but I'm going to tell you, he looked good being reserved. Yep. <laughs> and Bob, he's another one. He gets out there, he wants to have oh, a yeah, good time, he, and he's going to have a good he time. He's going to have a good time, and got some good horses. Yes, he does. Got some real good horses. So a Bob's a real nice guy, too. Yeah, he Fun is. Fun to talk to. Yeah, he said his other brother was under the weather that when I talked to him, that he was gonna go check on him. Well, here she is. <laughs> yeah. Cole Hahn and Allie Jo Jacobs. Now, she'd been under the weather, but now she came back with a big splash. She had some good rides. We'll probably see her in Tunica, too. I would say so. I'll tell you what now. She, she, she fisted me at the thing and she, Hit her little knuckle on that ring, and, and she said, "Well, what'd you do to your finger?" I tell you, is born a maverick. Good horse right here. I love this horse. I, he is one, Jerry. That when he comes in, he gets your attention. And Bob, Bob just has. If you watch every video of this horse. Yeah, there ain't a shade of difference. That's right. Anytime that he's in there, there's not a shade of difference in the class. Well, this horse here keeps getting better and better every time yeah. you look at it. Right here on the slide. Now, that's Jesse Crosley. Yeah. That's mine right there. And oh. I tell you what, anybody can ride that thing. Yeah. Oh, Jesse, he really. We've enjoyed had, himself now. Uh, that's, he first, had that's first pad noise he ever showed in his life. Well, like that's, that's, why we showed. that's why I told him he could do it. Yeah. But I, on the sly, he's, he's a good one. Anybody can ride him. I now, would, I tell you I what, this groom, ride him. this groom class is a good class. Oh, yeah. It's a real good one. There's Patrick Mahomes and Paul Simmons. Terry Manure. But I, I doesn't, doesn't uh, Paul own part of that horse? Yeah. But now I'm gonna tell you what. Now this this horse here is well, he is got top it done, now. buddy. He, he's looking good in there. I, I I love that horse right there. Well, I mean, Paul does a good job. Paul does a real good job. That horse, Terry. He's he got a good horse right there. Real good horse. That horse can, can do it. Right here, honored in Texas, and Bob Adcock, his amateur four-year-old stallion reserve. Now he was reserved right behind Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. 
And they, look how good that is. I mean, you had two two good horses out there. Oh, and you had two good that horses. Class that class was full of them. Yeah. I want everybody to know that in the coming weeks we will be showing video from the classic. But uh, this week we got a reason for not showing it. Here's I'm Coach Cal, show pleasure youth winner. You know that's that horse's yeah. show right there. That's it, the class for that horse. Oh yeah, that horse is good. And Allie does a good job with him too. I'm Coach Cal and Allie Joe Jacobs. I talk to people all the time, say it's hard to believe that those little kids can handle them big yeah. horses. Here's, he's a Dixieland delight, and Jeff Lachlan for Vicky Pennick, your park pleasure winner. This will make her feel better. Yeah. Jeff does a good job with that oh, horse. He's good got job. some good horses out there. Right here's a country lineman and Bill Callaway for Beth Beasley. I know who's going to be getting this horse. <laughs> One of them girls. Yep. Yeah. Leave a good one. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Minor Ordeal and Tyler Balkum, your Walden Horse Championship winner. Now, he's down to Sugar Creek. He's in the breeding barn, people. Go get him. I've been looking forward to that horse going to the breeding barn. He can flat get it done. He's the one that yeah. broke the the barrier for purchasing horses. Oh yeah. Here's your youth championship reserve winner, Super Bowl MVP. Now this is reserve. Oh yeah. That was a real good class there yes, too. Yes, it was. That class that was a, it was a tough what class. What was it? 14, 15 in there. Yeah. It was packed full. Them kids really enjoy get called in there one by one. Yeah. And everybody, yeah. you know, I'm gonna tell you, that was excited. Hey, it's it brought excitement to the show. Well, that's what you want. That's, that's what right. it's for, and it does. They started that in Tunica, yeah, mm -hmm. doing that, and it it, it, it has worked. Show. Now I want to explain to everybody why we didn't show in the class video. We this next segment, we have got an interview with Jeffrey Howard. That's going to tell the standing of the industry on the legal end on what's going on in Congress. He's going to explain every, everything, and he does it very well. So I suggest you all just tighten up, grab you some popcorn, and listen. Yes, but very we'll, important. We'll do that as soon as Jerry does his job. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Get your cat off from here, sit in your cell with the rooms. Want everybody to know the rooms of the games we're here today? So, 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 2600, 2600, here, 5600, 5600, you bought a 5500, so, 5500, you bought a 5500, so, 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 you break one, break the next one, that's the real deal, guys, right here, opportunity is knocking right here, Johnny. here's a horse to take it home, right outside this, but so, 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 you bought it. Six-time world champion in the amateur and open competition, four-time amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dow at Fantasy Farms in Bellbuckle, Tennessee.
call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. More of What a Horse coming up. All right, this uh, next segment is, well, it, it just, it is what it is. It's 20-something uh, minutes long, but it really sets a tone for where we're at. So I, I strongly recommend that you sit there and listen to what Jeffrey says because it's pretty much very, well, it is. It's very important. Yes, it so, is very important. Let's go ahead and get started. Thank you, Jerry, for allowing us the opportunity to keep everybody informed of what's going on. I think everyone is aware that the PAST Act um, is out there, um, and I, we wanted to take an opportunity to update everyone from both the legislative angle and the regulatory angle of kind of where the industry finds itself at the current time. We've had uh, three uh, meetings, um, two in Shelbyville, one in, in North Carolina. So we're doing our best uh, to keep everybody informed, to be as transparent as possible. There are no secrets. There are no um, hidden details to this. This is all out in the open. This is all information basically you can find uh, on your own. We just wanted to make it very easy for people to uh, hear it direct and, and get a, a what's going on currently in the industry. So. The PAST Act has two angles. We talked about the legislative and the regulatory. From a legislative standpoint, um, the PAST Act did pass out of committee. I think that vote was 46 to 9. It is a, a live bill, but it has not been scheduled uh, for any vote. Um, and so I think most people are aware that Congress is on break until after the election, so they'll be back November the 14th. Um, and um, there's a legislative session that would be until uh, the break for Thanksgiving, they'll come back in December. Again, depending on a lot of what happens in the election, November the 8th uh, will determine the agenda moving forward. But uh, as a standalone bill, there's, there's not a consensus amongst anyone uh, for or against a past act that that would go through or have the time to go through in this legislative session. So there'll be another one that starts with the new Congress at the first of the year. Definitely, we have our lobbyists. We have our Tennessee, Kentucky, mainly southeastern um, elected officials very much aware of what's going on um, and um, so we don't we do not believe that the legislative route will be uh, a successful one for those that are uh, proponents of the past act in regards to rulemaking um, there are two rules there's the old rule from 2017 just to bring everybody quickly up to speed on that that is the rule that we went through a comment period on it, it uh, that rule right there um, prohibited the pad the action device bans and eliminated the HIOs. To remind you, the action devices were gone, uh, would be taken 30 days after publication in the Federal Register. The pads uh, uh, would be uh, not be taken in, uh, until one year from publication in the Federal Register, and the HIOs would be one year from publication in that. So we went through that, we filed comments uh, previously to that. The USDA did not change the rule based upon our comments. They published it on their website, but prior to it going to the Federal Register, uh, President Trump um, was elected, inaugurated, and just like previous administrations, put a hold to all rules uh, that had not yet been uh, appeared in the Federal Register. So that's why that rule didn't go into effect. Um, one of the things that people need to make sure you are aware is rulemaking is real, rulemaking is final. Um, the rulemaking is what implemented the SCAR rule in 1979, eliminated the 10 ounce chain. Uh, in 1988, developed the current heel-toe uh, ratio, uh, even actually took the pad initially away. However, the AVMA, AAP, many people came to the defense uh, uh, of the pad and thus it was uh, allowed to uh, stay in, but we came away with a, a short or smaller heel-toe ratio as a part of that. So, um, so that rule, um, the USDA formally withdrew that rule formally in 2021. Upon them um, issuing that withdrawal, it came out, we published that. They said that they were removing that rule because uh, they were going to expeditiously file a new rule that um, took into account the information in the 2017 rule, but also additional facts and data that had come uh, in the last five years, most notably the National Academies of Science study uh, that was jointly funded by the industry and the USDA. So um, 
when it was formally withdrawn, the HSUS, the Humane Society, sued the USDA. Um, in the district court in D.C., um, the USDA prevailed, uh, and that court ruled that no, the rule was not final, and it could be withdrawn because it had never been printed in the Federal Register, which is, as most would say, the, the, the thing that has to happen. It's the final uh, step to any rule becoming official. Um, HSUS appealed that um, and were represented by a very, very prominent firm, Latham & Watkins um, in Washington, D.C., actually represented pro bono, um, so they didn't pay for that defense. Um, but in a split decision in the Court of Appeals, a two-to-one decision, um, they overturned the lower court's ruling. Um, and they said that it had met the threshold, and because it had been put out on the USDA's website as final, that it did not have to wait uh, on just the publication in the Federal Register for it to be uh, final. That ruling surprised uh, most everyone because that's a long-standing uh, regulatory threshold that it would have to meet. So um, initially at that point in time, that happened right before this year's celebration. Um, the industry, upon hearing that, we had already retained a firm, Ellis, George, and Cipollone, um, to represent us in the new rule that would file the comments. We had a different firm, uh, a different lawyer that did it in 2016 and 17. And so we had, so at that point, uh, given not knowing whether the USDA, and it would actually be the Department of Justice on behalf of the DOJ, if they were going to appeal that uh, Court of Appeals ruling, we retained our firm and they filed a motion to intervene uh, on behalf of the celebration. And um, so we filed that motion. Um, we also filed a petition for rehearing. So the deadline for everyone on that was October the 6th. So on October the 6th, um, the DOJ did appeal the Court of Appeals ruling. Um, what does that mean? They actually appealed a portion of it. Uh, they did not appeal that the rule had met the threshold to be final. What they appealed was and asked for a removal of a couple of paragraphs of the opinion of the Court of Appeals is they wanted to allow the lower court, the district court, which is where the, the it was remanded back to them, that they would have wide discretion in what is the remedy of that. And so the USDA clearly does not want to implement the old rule because they have a new rule coming. So that appeal did happen, so that is the process with which we're in right now. It's somewhat of a waiting game. The court has not ruled on the motion to intervene or the petition rehearing for rehearing in the industry. The main difference in our petition for rehearing versus the Department of Justice's is, is we both appealed that it had not met the threshold, that that was a bad decision by the court, that an improper decision by, by the Court of Appeals, and that it does have to be published to become final. And then an alternative to that also similarly to the DOJ, the remedy part of it and what discretion the lower court has uh, to not have to implement that. So um, depending on the outcome of those appeals, depending upon whether or not we're granted the motion to intervene, and depending upon what the remedy is for the 2017 rule, what they do with it, are they able to withdraw it or do they have to go forward with it, um, we could be faced with having to file comments again. They would have to go out for notice and comment. Some of the effective dates and things of that are old. Um, the effective dates are actually all in 2017 and 2018. So we would be forced to file comments on that. And then if they didn't change, well, they would not change any of the wording in it, we would, um, as an industry, file um, pursue litigation um, with regards to that and what we don't feel like is right in that rule. So. That's the, the most current information on the 2017 rule. Let's talk about the 2022 rule. I've already told you, tell you again, when they withdrew uh, in late 2021, uh, the old rule, they said um, and have done, uh, that they would expeditiously file a, a new rule. So they have internally drafted that rule, and that rule currently is at the Office of Management and Budget. That rule went from USDA to OMB uh, on September the 2nd. That's the second Friday of this year's celebration. OMB um, 
has a 90 day period that they can go through a review of that um, and doesn't mean that they're going to take the full 90 days um, but I don't know exactly how, how pressing this issue is for them so um, if you say 90 days that would be first of December uh, before they would send the rule back um, to USDA at that point in time um, the USDA would publish the rule as a proposed rule with a comment period. That comment period is stated in their previous release on this rule as a 60-day time period. We asked for an extension and were granted last time uh, up to 90 days uh, from 60 to 90. And so most of us, um, through just what it, information is out there, um, suspect that the 2022 rule We'll do similar things um, and similar things that the industry is in opposition to, um, such as the, the ban of pads, action device, hoof bands, weighted shoes, um, elimination of the HIOs, um, and so and just the burdens. If people get into the nuts and bolts of reading th this rulemaking, the, the change to show management and how hard and more expensive it will be uh, to have horse shows. One of the things that I think our industry has um, allowed it itself to, to take on is is that this is about our performance show horse and not our pleasure show horse no no no. this is about all show horses and so that's a that's a very uh, distinct thing that people need to understand is is this is not just for our padded Tennessee walking horses a rule for them there are many things that will affect all aspects um, of what we do so um, once we file the comment uh, the comments obviously a lot of people will file comments I think there were 100,000 comments or whatever it was last time. Um, the USDA reviews those comments, has a time period of which uh, that they would review all those. Um, the important part for us, for everyone, in regards to the comment period is um, if we don't make the argument and the factual basis for those arguments in the, in the comment period, we can't litigate on those issues or create or bring something up that wasn't on the record um, to file to file litigation so that's why the comment period for us is so important it's why it's going to be very expensive um, is all of the industry's arguments as to why what we do is okay and what we want um, for our show horse it has to be in there or we cannot raise it that'd be the same for the others their justification for why they are taking the pad, the action device, the band, all of those, obviously that would have to be on the record as well. So it would be a closed record case um, if we were to file uh, litigation. So at this point in time, it's premature to say that we definitely will because we haven't seen what's in the rule. So until we see what is in the rule, um, it is somewhat premature, but granted they said they're going to strengthen the 17 rule. I think it's safe for us to assume that many of the things that we're in opposition to will be uh, included. So at that point in time, the USDA will get the final rule, which also then goes back to the Office of Management and Budget for another 90 day or up to 90 day review period. So at that point in time, we can also request meetings with uh, the Office of Management and Budget. We actually can request those meetings um, in either time of their review. So from a strategic standpoint and, and what we feel like is best, we, we definitely will follow the advice of the attorneys uh, who are very well versed in, in regulatory law and, and, and definitely somebody that we feel very confident um, uh, that is, is representing our best interest in the best way. So um, OMB, once they are done with it, it goes back to the department, any changes that they recommend are made and then it is published on their website as a final rule that has been sent to um, the Federal Register for publication. So it got to exactly that phase. So OMB sent the rule back to USDA last time as final. It was put on their website. We all got to read what was going to be in it. It had just not been published. So we've gotten all the way to that stage. Previously, we just didn't get to implementation of it before. So I think um, staying in touch with um, leadership from the breeders, the trainers, um, owners, the celebration, um, everyone is going to be kept 100% in the loop on this. We talk regularly with the heads of those organizations. Um, we are keeping everyone in the loop. It's the purpose of today 
and, and Jerry allowing us to do this um, is, is that that is our um, main objective is is that everyone feels like um, that they're uh, knowledgeable that they know what's going on so that when you're out making decisions um, that you kind of know exactly where where things stand um, questions if you have any questions of us uh, I think Jerry's going to put my email uh, on the screen um, where you can send me an email. You can also ask questions of the president of the trainers, a board member of the trainers, a board member of TWEBA, anyway. But my email's there. It's jhoward at horseworld.net. Um, I'm happy to, I don't necessarily have all the answers, but I can get you uh, the answer um, from one of the experts that we're dealing with. And um, so again, I just want to make sure that people are well aware um, of where things stand and don't feel like things are happening that you don't know about. Um, this is a, a, a very critical and important time for us. Um, we feel very confident in uh, our data, uh, the data from inspection. Um, uh, it's better now than it was uh, when they went um, trying to do the 2017 rule. Um, and so we're going to uh, definitely uh, defend our show horse uh, to the maximum degree, and that's what this is about. There is going to be a fundraising element to this. I think everyone would be aware that no entity in our business uh, has uh, the appropriate funds um, to, to fight something like this and the multiple stages that are involved in this. Um, there will be multiple phases to this. There will be the comment period phase. Uh, there could potentially be a uh, to seek a stay against the implementation of the rule while um, the third phase of that would be uh, litigation to challenge the validity of the rule. So, um, I think if you read Kevin Shea's um, announcement regarding the, the rule or, or when he was interviewed about it, uh, one of the reasons that they took a little extra time, one of the reasons they're dotting their I's, crossing their T's is they too know that the industry intends to defend itself and, and that there's a high likelihood of litigation to, to solve this. So um, a couple of questions that have come up during um, some of the sessions that we've had. Um, if you donate money, if it's not necessary to, to uh, litigate this matter, would you get your money back? The answer to that is yes. Where can you um, donate? Um, you can donate to the foundation, which is FAST, uh, known in the industry. It's a 501c3, um, and 100% um, of the money that is donated will go to no administrative cost. It will go directly to the firm representing us in this matter. So. Um, the amount spent versus what we think the budget is of what we're trying to raise, um, that'd be prorated. You would get that percentage of your money back if, it, if we don't go forward. Again, I can't imagine that we wouldn't be forced to go through all phases of this. Um, however, you know, it's until we see the rule, it is, it is premature for us to, to say what we are going to do. So um, fundraising has gone well. Um, the breeders, the trainers, the celebration, um, have all uh, contributed with major donations um, and through industry participants and, and other avenues there have been some very creative fundraising ideas. The United We Stand Horse Show uh, the second weekend in November uh, in Tunica, all proceeds from that show um, will go towards this um, and so that's a joint effort of the, tw uh, the breeders, the celebration, the trainers and FAST so those four organizations are putting on a show. None of them individually are managing that show. There was a show manager hired, but um, it's, it's kind of a collective effort to, to one, go back to Tunica, because we used to have a show there, uh, as well as be able to raise money uh, from that show that will help uh, with the, the legal fund. The Wagonals Report and other media uh, will be kept abreast of the fundraising and, and how it's going and how much we exactly need and, and how much of that we, we have already gotten and what will remain. Uh, but we feel confident from the early uh, returns on that that we'll be able to raise the necessary funds to defend our show horse um, and make sure that we are well represented and, and that our interests are well represented. So um, again, just to summarize kind of possible outcomes here, um, the 17 rule, depending on what happens in that appeal, what the lower court rules, we could be forced to, to challenge that rule. Um, the 22 rule is definitely in the pipeline, is definitely coming. Um, I haven't heard this question, but others have said that people think, well, you know, I don't know if this is going to happen or, uh, you know, wait and see. No, 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 it is happening. 
Um, and the USDA has been very clear um, and, and it has now sent this rule to the OMB. So it is coming. It is, it's not a if this is happening, it is simply when. And that timeline that I went through, I mean, it could be. You could, you could find us in uh, a year or even longer uh, process here. So this will not be quick, but it won't also. We had asked the attorneys, you know, how long would the litigation phase be? With a closed record case like that, they said that it, it won't, there won't be discovery and things like that that drag on. So, you know, 12 to 18 month uh, timeline is what they gave us. I think that was obviously a, a best guess. Um, so again, this could be something. The other reason uh, that's important is for fundraising. Um, the, the, the fundraising and the uh, budget set forth by our attorneys was in, in those three phases. It would be in the uh, comment phase, it would be in the seeking the stay, uh, and then the litigation phase. So there are three phases to that. So it's not necessary to have all of the money raised or the needed funds allocated to start. Um, but if we don't have the, the funding that it will allow us to have the flexibility to seek relief from it, there's really no reason to file the comments uh, or pay for the, those comments because that would be the purpose in filing the comments is, is what we oppose in the rulemaking. So um, again, any questions, feel free to email or ask um, your, your leadership in your area. We, we are trying our best to keep everyone informed. Um, the rack and horse to spotted. Uh, it's, it's, it's not an issue that just as Tennessee walking horses, they are involved. The Rack and Horse Association has contributed uh, very generously uh, to it. Alabama, North Carolina, Maury County Horsemen's Association, people are starting to understand the impact of this and, and what impact it is on show management, the charities that benefit from our horse shows. As horse shows become more expensive to have, who would suffer right there? Uh, it, the person paying it, but also the charity that is being able to raise money. So you can just take um, and, and filter that down. And so, um, again, thank you, uh, Jerry. Thank you, What a Horse. Thank you uh, to, to all those that have participated in, in the meetings. Um, Frank Eichler has been um, wonderful uh, to work with and, and uh, definitely does a better job of explaining the legal things than I have. Uh, Steve Smith uh, as well. Um, Casey Kesselring with FAST. Uh, Bill Young with the trainers. Mark Fair. Jack Heffington with, with the breeders. Uh, again, this is a very much a collective effort. It's not uh, my effort or the, just the celebrations effort. It's this industry's effort. And so, again, feel free to, to question us. Uh, uh, send anything that, that you're concerned about, questions you may have. Um, so any, anything along those lines, feel free to reach out. Thank you very much. Right there it is. Yes. All right. Do your thing. We'll be right back after these messages. Hello ladies and gentlemen, as you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse, but I also have another passion and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. And we've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411 and see if I can save you money on your communications. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi-night shows, sibling and progeny searches, rider cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You know, the information that uh, Jeffrey shared, he hit on some very 
precise topics. Number one, where we stood. Yes. But then he let everybody know the amount of work that Frank Eichler is doing, which is an enormous amount of work. Mm -hmm. That plus Frank Eichler has contributed to the legal fund, something that uh, a lot of people don't think about. The other thing is he said it, and in this fact, this is about our show horse, not about the performance horse, the padded horse, not about the flat shot horse. It's about our show horse, both of them. That's what this is all about. And I cannot understand why anybody, I don't care which horse you ride. I mean, we got a flat shot oh, horse. Oh, yes, that's right. We got a performance horse. I'm supporting them both. Yeah. And, and, and Jerry, you, you, you deal a lot with people that's got the speed trackers, the, what, what, like a single foot or yeah. all. They're in the same boat. Well, you're exactly right. I advise anyone that watched this on Facebook or TV to share this with all your friends and everything because this is very important messages that the needs what that you need to hear and see, you know, and listen to because Jeffrey hit it right nail on the head right there. You know, he's telling everything what's going on and how and what we need to do. Well, he basically told me the same thing that Frank had told me, and uh, people need to realize this that. We've got a lot of people working for us, but we've got an enormous amount of people working against us. Yes. And they, they don't mind spending money, but I'm going to make this very clear. Some of you people in other breeds that think that you're out here on the outside looking in and want to throw a rock every now and then, we're a domino. If they get us, I promise you, they're going to get you. That's right. Any kind of show horse, like you say, a show horse. I mean, if you show any pad or weighted shoe, hackney ponies or anything got action to them or whatever, I mean, they're, they're going to involve everything. All of them. And they, they, that's what a lot of people don't understand. They say, well, it's walking horse. Who cares? I got news for you. I promise you, if the walking horse industry goes down, you're following. That's right. We'll meet you at the gate. Because if they get us, there's no way they are not going to get you because it involves everything that you use from the pad to the weighted shoe. It's all gone. And it does not say in these rules that it's just Tennessee Walking Horse. It says Horse Protection Act. That, that's right. And that's all of them. Now we're going to sign off and go to Tunica, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to getting down there. Yes, I am too. I'm going to play three-card poker. He's going to eat. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, that's what you said. You said you're looking forward to the food. The food that's they right. must be serving something down there that I ain't ate before. It's that good old Mississippi but food down there. <laughs> good, good food. Everybody go to Tunica. Have a great time. When you come back next week, we'll have a new show for you right here on Water Horse. Have a good time. See y'all later. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunker down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm gonna be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.